Hello, I'm Will Beckham. I'm a researcher at Johns Hopkins University in the School of Public Health. And today I'll be talking about the impact of COVID-19 on transgender communities globally. We know that trans people face heightened vulnerabilities, greater stigma and discrimination, and significant minority stress that lead to a lot of health disparities. And these disparities would only be exacerbated by emergencies, including this pandemic. We hypothesized that the pandemic would have impact, especially on socioeconomic conditions and would lead to loss of employment and income, loss of health insurance, especially in places like the US where health insurance is tied to employment, disruptions in safely conducting sex work and other gig economy work, um, and homelessness. And very particular to trans people, we hypothesize that there'll be um, disruptions in gender affirming care and access to resources, as well as worse mental health care access and outcomes. And of course, it, many trans people have higher rates of HIV AIDS and disruptions to prevention and treatment, PrEP and ART are um, probable. So we conducted a survey through LGBTQ dating apps that have a global reach, Hornet and Her. In round one, which was the spring and summer of 2020, we had over 24,000 respondents. Uh, and about a thousand of those we were able to analyze as trans and gender diverse respondents. Two thirds of them identified as non-binary or third gender or some other gender, not men or women. Um, about 30% were identified as trans feminine, trans women who were assigned male birth. And a very small portion were trans masculine or assigned female or intersex at birth. And now live as men. Uh, we have one preprint in MedRx uh, from this and another paper as well that's um, in peer review. I'll be talking about some of the results from that. And round two is ongoing now. We have over 14,000 respondents at this time and we plan to do some trans specific analysis on that as well. So this first round of the survey had respondents from 76 countries, most of them in Europe and Asia. 50% screen positive for depression, 46% screen positive for anxiety, 17% reported an expected loss in health insurance, and 77% expected an income loss. And we found there were reductions in access to gender affirming resources. 55% of the sample said that they had these reductions in access, and this could include anything such as services, including healthcare or therapy, but also things that are important for one's gender expression and um, identity, such as haircuts or hair removal and supplies such as hormones, binders, wigs, packers, breast forms, anything else that one needs to be able to live in their gender. And then we also saw reductions in the ability to live in one's gender, the amount of time when one was able to do that, um, about 30%, 38% reported um, having reduced time to live in their gender. For example, if they had to move home to live with parents who were not supportive or did not know that they are trans. And we did find an association, a statistically significant association between these predictors and the outcomes of higher prevalence of depressive and anxiety symptoms, as well as suicidal ideation. So there, though it's cross-sectional, there is a link there that definitely needs some attention. And of course, this was a multi-institution, multidisciplinary coalition, the COVID Disparities Working Group from a lot of institutions, organizations, as well as the private sector and I want to acknowledge all of them and thank all my collaborators and co-authors on this as well. Thank you.